If you're here for creative video ideas, you've come to the wrong place. It's an art transfer video. And it also come back to another video, and this one's going to be talking about even more transfers. We love it! Rumours, contracts, extensions and actual transfer deals that have taken place in the last day or so. Pretty much all today. Let's get into it. So first up, we'll go for the one that was made official first. And this one was on the last night, so it's not even that long ago, to be honest. But it was Eamon Brophy signing a pre-contract with St Mirren from Kilmarnock. Now, of course, this means that he doesn't join St Mirren officially until the summer. He's still a Kilmarnock player at the moment anyway, unless they make the deal official in January. He's not a Kilmarnock player officially until the summer. No. He's not a St Mirren player officially until the summer. I've seen a lot of people saying that this is a sign of the ambition of a team like St Mirren now who are wanting to be a more top six club and I'm not as sold on that idea. Like Eamon Brophy has been a good player in the past but ever since he got the Scotland call up that seemed like the kind of peak for him and he's not really hitting the heights that he did hit back then, since then. So I'm not entirely sure how much he's going to have an impact at St Mirren obviously next season when he arrives. It's yet to be seen, will this spur him on to perform really well going into next season now that he knows what his future looks like? Will he perform better for Kilmarnock so that he goes into next season with a bit of form behind him? It'd be nice to see him kick into form a bit so that I felt a bit more confident about his ability going to St Mirren and perform well. However, I don't know if it's going to be the case. As I said, he's just not hitting the heights for me that he once previously hit. So, I'm yet to be convinced by this sign-in, to be honest. It does show a wee bit of ambition for St Mirren because it isn't just another one of the standard names that gets chucked about every single Scottish team left, right and centre. It's nice to see St Mirren go for someone that is currently contracted by a direct rival. That's the main positive around it for me. In terms of on the pitch, Eamon Brophy still has to kind of prove to me that he's going to really have an impact in the St Mirren squad and be better than the likes of Jonathan Obika currently is. Next up, now which one was the next one to happen? I believe it was Ewan Murray to be linked with Aberdeen. Now this one, very close to my heart, tugs at the heartstrings to be honest. He's the captain of the club and he's performed very well so far this season. He got hampered with injury last season and we barely really seen him in action apart from near the end of the season just past. And obviously he's coming to this season, scored a very decent amount of goals, seven goals and I think two assists to go along with that. And he's formed a really good partnership at the back with Paul Watson. And as I said, he's the captain of the club. I really don't want to see him move on, but since he is in the last six months of his contract, it does seem like he can now go and obviously speak to other clubs like a numerous amount of people even within this video have gone on to do and found new clubs because of that. If he does go on to speak to a team like Aberdeen, then I do expect him to move on, whether that be this month or in the summer. There was a rumour on Twitter that if Aberdeen do end up doing this pre-contract deal, it will be similar to when they signed Matty Kennedy from St Johnson, where they signed him on a pre-contract, but then also signed him permanently in the January window, but for a very cut price. That would be the least desirable option for me. I would rather get the most out of Ewan Murray and get him till the end of the season because I don't doubt his commitment, especially because he's the captain of the club. I would hate for us to lose him in terms of pre-contract and then them to come in and take him at a cut price deal anyway. I know we'll get nothing for him in the summer, but if he does go in January, we'll lose his ability in the team for the next four or five months and potentially hampers us going into a playoff run. So I really want to see him stay at the club. If he moves on, fair dues to him because he has performed well and he's probably got it in him to really go up and perform well at Premiership level. I didn't expect it to be Aberdeen, but if he is offered a chance to play at a team like Aberdeen, you'd take it if you're a football player, especially in these current times with the uncertainty around football. So the next one to happen was involving your man Yogi Hughes and Ross County. I believe this is his first signing as Ross County manager now. He's signed Tony Andrew. Now this one I don't really think is a great signing if I'm being quite honest. I've seen kind of mixed reviews here and there about what people think about this one. It's just one of those ones that he's been around that many clubs and he's a bit injury prone these days. He isn't the player that he once was. 
However, he's obviously still got something, like you don't turn into a bad player instantly like that, but he just hasn't played enough football for a consistent period for quite a while now, and I just don't see him having the same sort of impact that John Hughes obviously has known him for in previous years. He's since played for teams like obviously Hamilton Aki's, Dundee United, etc, etc. I believe he had a stint down south as well. So I just don't know if he's going to be able to pull on the boots and perform extremely well at a premiership level to really make a statement in the Ross County team ahead of the likes of Harry Payton, Michael Gardine, etc, etc. Put it this way, Ross County once had Josh Mullen on the books this season. I would take Josh Mullen over Tony Andrew every day of the week. The next one that happened was Michael Smith to sign a new 18-month contract at Tynecastle Keep Mum at the club until the summer of 2022. No matter what year it is he's signed up until now, that is just a quality addition. Michael Smith is one of those consistent defenders that has had tremendous loyalty to Hearts. The fact that he stayed with them when they've been relegated down to the Championship speaks volumes of the man's character. He wants to be there for the journey, he loves being at Hearts clearly and he loves the thought of bringing the club back up to where they need to be. He's an international player, it's a quality player for Hearts to have at their disposal whether that's at Championship or Premiership level. It's a quality signing for Hearts, you've got to applaud them, drop the paper. Well done, the Jam Tarts. And finally, Paul McMillan swaps the city divide to join Dundee on a pre-contract. Dundee United, there, yeah? Now, you ain't gonna believe this. And there's Dundee. Now, of course, we've spoken about pre-contracts quite a bit, even in this one video. Earlier on, Eamon Brophy signing one that sees him join St Murren next season, and potentially Ewan Murray signing one for Aberdeen, which would see him join the Dons next season. And now we have Paul McMillan joining Dundee from Dundee United next season. I didn't see this one happening, if I'm being quite honest. I didn't think Paul McMillan would have swapped the divide. I would have thought he had other options that he would have looked at it and thought, well, I've had a good amount of time at Dundee United, I've respected the fans and just all that type of stuff. And I, I just didn't see him joining Dundee of all clubs. But I can see entirely why Dundee have made the signing. If they do remain a championship club next season, it's a fantastic signing for championship level because he obviously got promoted in Dundee United's team. He was good for Dunfermline at the time and he's certainly a player I would have taken back this month for a championship promotion push. He's obviously proven that he's not exactly complete premiership level so I can kind of understand why Dundee United have just relieved him of the services and allowed him to go down to the championship level with Dundee but it's a good signing for championship level as I said. I'm just not as convinced that if they do end up getting promoted via the promotion playoffs, which I do think is the most reasonable aspiration for Dundee this season, I just don't see him making a hell of a lot of an impact for him to have made this commitment to swap the divide like he has. I'm sure the United fans will wish him well. I just wouldn't have personally done it if my name was Paul McMillan and I had no neck. Joking of course, just about banter. <laughs> But I that's it for this video guys, just for watching, like the video if you did enjoy it, comment down below your thoughts on these transfers and also any transfers you want me to cover in future videos, that would be grand. Subscribe for more of this type of content and until the next video, I'll see you then. Cheers guys.